All right, folks, this is it. My magnum opus, and now I can retire, right? <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay. If you're new here, I'm very happy to have you. So I thought that I would kind of explain what this is all about before we actually dive in. So I am a recently agented author, and if you missed that announcement, I will link it up and down below so you can check it out. But I have been querying <laughs> for a long time. I think two and a half years to be exact, and this video is all of that footage. I start this journey with my YA fantasy, When the Sea Came For Us, and then later you will see I transition into querying The Glass Witch, which is actually the novel that got me an agent. And I did too just want to say that I'm not going into the details of my query or how I found agents or anything like that in this video. I will have more upcoming soon where I can kind of like give you more information about that kind of stuff but this is truly just like straight my experience. So please enjoy this feature length film or <laughs> video series tv show that I am calling finding a literary agent and querying them and then getting a request and an offer it takes 37 million years. This week on finding a literary agent and querying them and then getting a request and an offer it takes 37 million years. Market wise, it might not be it, folks. I need to collect myself and like stop sweating. I'm telling you guys every time I get a rejection, isn't that fun? So, <laughs> I am not okay. Feeling dread, feeling dread. guys okay so we're gonna go ahead and start this video uh, here in front of my lovely bookshelf as you can see and I'm gonna go through most of these books and pick out all of the agents I can out of the acknowledgments I'm not gonna be vetting them right now I'm just gonna compile a huge list um, in my little handy dandy notebook here I've got my little writing co-pilot hey bud he's just excited to find agents too yeah <laughs> So I just finished and I ended up with 26 agents. I think that's a pretty good start. 26 agents, that's a good place to start. And um, I'm going to keep collecting some more agents. There are some books that I enjoyed that I don't actually own. So I'm going to go online and look up those agents from those authors. And uh, then maybe we'll do some online research and start vetting from there. Okay, update. It's been a while. Um, <laughs> my heart is pounding. Uh, I just received my first full request on my manuscript. At this point in the game, I have gotten 22 rejections. 21, 22, somewhere in there. And as I might have mentioned, I'm trying to get agented with a mermaid book and those don't sell really well <laughs> so I'm kind of at this point where realistically I understand this book probably isn't going to be my debut so I've just kind of like been okay with that like I'm not even upset I'm just like and I passed all of the stages of grief and went straight to acceptance but then I got this full request today and I'm really flustered there's almost like this twin feeling of dread though <laughs> Like, oh, don't, it's not real. I literally had to read the email three times. I'm trying to keep a level head. Like, don't get too excited. This may not pan out. It's fine. But here we are. I'm excited. Hey, guys. So it has been about 
three weeks since I have gotten all of my requests in. Um, I am at a total of five requests. I've had some feelings and I was like laying on my bed talking to myself about it. And I was like, you know what, let me get on my camera, let me press record because the feelings that I'm feeling, I know probably a lot of other people have felt them too. The fact of the matter is I'm querying <laughs> and I have not let myself be excited about that. I always feel like there's something more to do. And that's not good because I know that the Lindsay of two years ago, the Lindsay that was like working her butt off every day and like sitting down at the computer and typing when she doesn't want to, when she has a headache, when she has a migraine, when she just had a bad day, like that Lindsay who was doing all of that work would be so proud of where I am now. And I'm not letting myself feel that. And that's so, so sad to me. Because this is what we've all been working towards, right? Like when you're writing your book, when you're in the early stages, when you're like slogging through that revision, man, the goal is to be where I am now, is to be querying or to, to be even farther than that, have agents wanting your book. <laughs> and like, that's where I am. Dang it, this is a big accomplishment, right? <laughs> like I should be happy, I should be celebrating. And I hate that because I should be excited. So, I guess the point of this rant <laughs> was that I am going to start being proud of myself and letting myself be proud of my accomplishments and letting myself just sit in this moment like I'm querying. <laughs> I've made it. I have agents who are reading my book and liking my stuff. This is so awesome and I need to feel that. Like I'm gonna let myself feel that. <sighs> okay, I survived. I got my first full rejection from an agent off of my manuscript. It really wasn't that bad. I think it's one of those things in psychology where if you dread it long enough when that thing finally happens, it's not as bad as what you think it will be. Kind of like you over estimate how bad you're gonna react to something and like I just saw the email and I was like oh dang all right like on to the next one but right now I feel okay I'm still working on my middle grade I love my middle grade I feel good about that and I'm trying to focus solely on my feelings right now from that book and just like living my life <laughs> quickly wanted to hop on here because I got another rejection on a full and I was having some feelings I thought I would share with you guys. So the rejection I got this morning was really really nice. This agent gave me a lot of compliments. She really liked my book. Um, she said she liked my characters, my world, my story overall was very rich and atmospheric. Um, but she said something <laughs> that really really got to me and this kind of impacted or hit me in the chest a little bit harder than her actual like rejection. So basically for a long time I have known that the book, yes I have a face mask and my dog wants to eat it. Yes thank you bud. <laughs> Go away. Basically I have known for a very long time before I even started querying that the book that I was trying to sell or trying to query was going to be a tough one to do so with. Uh, that is because it is a mermaid book which typically don't sell that well. And it's not only a mermaid book, it is a fat disabled mermaid. So like, you know, that's that's already an uphill battle right there. So I've kind of known for a long time that there's a good chance that this novel is not gonna be my debut, even though I love it so much and it's the book of my heart and like it's the book that I needed to write at the time and it's the book that I wish I had read when I was a teenager. It just, market-wise, it might not be it, folks. <laughs> what the agent ended up saying was that she was passing, even though she saw tons of talent and potential in my writing, uh, because the fantasy market is so saturated that she doesn't feel confident enough to take the chance on my book. That was tough to read because I had known these things in my head, but hearing it from an agent, like an official, somebody that knows and is deep in the industry say it, like realizing my fears really, really sucked. I think this just goes to show that it doesn't matter how much talent you have, if you're a good writer, if your story's good, uh, if the market doesn't work with what you're trying to do, it's going to be an uphill battle like it is for me. So I'm glad that, that, I'm not glad this happened to me, but I'm glad that I can share it happening with you. So maybe you can understand like, it's not all talent. Like you could be the best writer in the world and you could still not break in. Even though this really sucks and I feel like 
uh, with the other requests that I have out, I'm sure they'll come back from rejections as well. That, in a way, kind of makes me feel good because then I know it's not me. Like, I wrote a good book. I tried my darndest and I have done everything that I can to get me to the point of where I'm at. There's just like such kind of a relief or like a comfort in knowing that it's not my fault that my book is not being wanted. <laughs> by agent. I guess it is because I didn't have to write a mermaid book but you know what I mean. It's not like a skill thing. It's not a craft thing. It's not like I suck <laughs> which is a good thing to know. It's the market is not right for my book so I feel actually a little encouraged by that instead of discouraged because I know I have the skill set and I know that even if this isn't my debut the next book I write or the book after that or whatever like I could sell that if, if it is more to market and it's a good feeling. <laughs> Hey guys, so long time, no update, I know. It's funny because as this vlog, or whatever I'm calling this video, goes on longer, like, the less excited <laughs> I'm getting, because obviously it's taking a long time if you haven't noticed. So I just, I'm updating less because I have nothing to add and, you know, telling you guys every time I get a rejection isn't that fun or entertaining. But in my last, you know, sad, dreary update, I kind of talked about how I was pretty much done querying when the sea came for us and that whole spiel and that I was fully putting all of my attention into querying the glass witch now. I think I mentioned as well, if I didn't I'll like reiterate here, I've decided to make these query rounds of the glass witch really small, more small than I did with when the sea came for us. Right now I've only done one round and I've sent out eight queries and I have gotten responses from six of the eight. <laughs> and of the six responses that I've got, Four of them have been full or partial requests, which is just astounding and really exciting <laughs> and um, kind of wild. This whole experience with querying the glass, which has been so different from when the sea came for us. Obviously, as you can see, like I went two months of just straight rejections with when the sea came for us, and with the glass, which it's like. I, I'm, I actually have more requests than rejections at this point, which is just wild. I just have a better feeling about this book. Um, it's a lot more commercial and a lot more marketable than When the Sea Came For Us, and I know that. So I just wanted to keep the rounds small and tight and really precise with the agents that I really, really want. <laughs> June and I still don't have an agent. These updates are getting farther and farther apart because like there's just nothing, nothing happening. It's fine. I don't even know what round I'm on anymore. I think I just kept like quit <laughs> taking count of the rounds and just started sending out more queries when I got a response in from another agent. Um, so I have sent a total of 28 queries out so far and I have had 10 requests out of those 28. Publishing has just been so dead and I swear I think until yesterday. Yesterday I got two full requests in one day but before that I don't think I've heard from nearly anyone. I will also say uh I think I'm I'm coming to the end. <laughs> I'm coming to the edge. I'm coming to the end of this query journey. I think. I've already sent 28 queries, like I said. There's only a couple other agents on my list that I'm interested in. Just being realistic, like, um, don't know what's gonna happen. Don't know if it's gonna happen with this book. I'm trying to get my feelings around it, but like, I almost don't have any feelings because I'm just so dead inside. It's so funny, now that I've been at this for like, a year and a few months. I don't even get excited about the full requests anymore. It's just kind of like, okay, well, here we go. I don't know. It's kind of a weird detachment, but I also think it's probably a little bit healthy. I did receive a really cute full request yesterday. One of them was uh, the partial that turned into a full request. And the agent sent me the, the like the sweetest full request I've ever received. Don't know if anything's going to happen from it. Don't know if anything's ever going to happen. <laughs> But I'll keep updating you, I guess, until something does or um, I've exhausted all of the agents I'm interested in. So I have been uh, sitting on a little bit of news for like maybe like 48 hours uh, and that is 
Thanks, Max. You just ruined my big announcement. And that is that I got an R&R &R or a revise and resubmit. And now, I'm not gonna lie, in full transparency, I totally waited 48 hours to film this clip because, guys, my first initial reaction was just despair and disappointment. And it's totally my fault. Like, it makes me sound like such a whiny baby for like, oh, I got an R&R. &R. This was from the agent who I mentioned a few clips back, was like really excited about my book and like kind of gushed in the email and her request and all of that stuff. So, and I think it's important to add here too, I haven't really let myself have hope in this whole journey. I've been like realistic to almost like negative and on my whole perspective on the whole thing. Uh, so I was like, oh, I'm just never gonna get an agent. It's fine, that's realistic. But then she really liked my book a lot and I was like, is she, is she gonna offer <laughs> and basically what happens is I just I got my hopes up and I was like oh I think she's gonna offer I think she's gonna offer and then like when the R&R &R came in I was like what despair which is so stupid because like an R&R &R is such an opportunity it's so rare of an opportunity that they would want to take a chance on you I just elbowed my dog in the face who really just wants a lot of attention okay go away you're you smelling like butts so anyways after I got the R&R &R and then just felt absolutely like disappointed in the fact that I didn't get an actual offer and then felt like disgusted at myself for being such like a whiny titty baby. <laughs> Can I say that on the internet? I don't know. But that's what I felt like. I felt like a little baby, like who was just like whining and upset. I had a conversation with my critique partners and like they really helped me kind of see and get perspective on R&Rs and like how probably a lot of people are disappointed with R&Rs, but they just don't talk about it. So I wanna talk about that with you because it was like eye-opening for me. I think it's kind of almost natural to feel a little disappointed with an R&R &R just because you've got one more hurdle to jump through, one more round of work to do before you finally get that little bit of payoff that we have been like striving for for years at this point, right? So I think, once I take a step back and look at it, like, yeah, it makes sense to be a little disappointed. Like, I am a human being and I am, I am contain multitudes of emotions and I can equally be so grateful that this agent took an opportunity on me and at the same time be like, darn it. I think I should say too here, I still have four full requests out in five active queries. So this agent may not be my agent. I am incredibly excited just to hop on the phone with her. Like even if nothing happens and nothing comes of it, I get to have a phone call with an agent who obviously saw potential like in my book. Like she wouldn't be doing this if she didn't think it was sellable. So that's very exciting and it's validating. It makes me realize that like, you know, I'm not totally worthless as an author. And um, I'm just excited to get her feedback and see what she wants to work on and make the book the best that I possibly can. So this is the gorgeous angle that I'm gonna have you guys at um, for my call. We are about four minutes till 11. <laughs> And I'm feeling very nervous. <laughs> I'm actually, you know, this is the perfect analogy for my life. Um, I actually woke up with a migraine at 4 a.m. this morning. So I had to take two migraine pills this morning. And the side effects of those are just killer. So I'm actually incredibly dizzy and nauseous. And um, having trouble putting sentences together, which is just excellent, you know waiting for the phone call of my life. I feel like if I go into this with a mindset of this isn't gonna work out, <laughs> I won't be disappointed when it doesn't work out. And then if it does work out and she's lovely and we vibe perfectly together, then I'll just be so excited. Yeah, that's where my mind is right now. I probably should turn this off and like pick my head up, but I'm afraid if I do that, I'll fall out of my chair. <laughs> Writing with disabilities, this is how it goes, folks. Here we go, middle grade and picture books. I'm working in. Hello.
Oh my gosh. <laughs> it is exactly 12.01. We talked exactly one hour. That was amazing and I'm... <sighs> I need to collect myself and like stop sweating and stop smiling. <laughs> okay, so uh, that was amazing. I love this agent. She's very sweet and she had some great ideas. Uh, most of it is clarification or just making things that are already there like polished up and brought to the surface and what ended up happening is she offered to do a 30-day exclusive r and r and what that means is that i can choose to do these revisions and then turn it back into her and then from that time on like a clock starts and she has 30 days to read that and decide if she wants to represent it or not. She said she was gonna work on typing up notes. So I, I was trying to take notes as we were talking and she was like, oh, don't feel like you have to take notes. I'm gonna send you a full like edit letter and you can take notes off that. And so like bless. <laughs> so she's gonna send me those probably within the next week and then I can start brainstorming and then maybe go into revisions. Hi, yes, okay. Um. I am formatting the email now to send back, oh, to send back this R&R &R and I am so, like, I am so nervous. It's so bad, you guys, like, and I, I'm having a migraine, like, just to be completely honest. I feel it coming on. I felt it coming on since early this morning, so I know I'm about to be, like, really bad in a couple hours, but, like, like when I sit, when I stand still like this, I can feel my heartbeat in my throat. It's so bad. I'm so nervous, and I know this is making my migraine worse. Uh, but I just wanted to update because this is exciting. I mean, I might drop dead on camera, but you know, at least we'll have it on film. <laughs> oh my gosh, I could die. I could die. I literally don't know how much of this is my migraine and how much of it is nerves, but I'm so jittery and I could like vomit right now. <laughs> okay, I am attaching it right now oh i just feel like i should read through it one more time like i've already read through it like 17 times and i've had two betas but i'm just like one last time wouldn't hurt oh my gosh okay uh i'm i'm a hot mess y'all i really did not think it would affect me this much but it totally is i have to proofread this email at least one more time or i'm gonna lose it <laughs> okay are we ready here it goes Ooh, that's my descent. My little baby body can't handle this. <laughs> oh gosh, okay, well, I did it. I sent off the R&R &R after um, almost two months of working on it. Let me summarize how I feel, besides awful. Um, in general, besides that, about this book, I feel really good. I feel like even if she doesn't choose to represent me, that I have made this book even better than it was before. So this is not the announcement video where I say if I got an agent or not. I just was thinking the other day, um, it's been a couple days since I've sent off the finished revise and resubmit. I was just thinking about how this waiting process, even though it's not like there's nothing really happening, um, <laughs> there's a lot emotionally happening, too much emotionally happening. I thought I would update you guys. Um, because I don't know I want this to be like real and raw and show everyone what it really feels like to be doing an R&R &R and querying and all that kind of stuff you know so <laughs> I am not okay and I feel like this would be so maybe different if you are like a healthier person than me mentally and physically I don't know maybe it's just me I feel like my tolerance like what I have the mental bandwidth to deal with on the daily is like always at 90 percent <laughs> like i'm always just at 90 because of my illness and like you know dealing with like chronic pain on the daily and then emotionally dealing with the fact that you're in pain all the time like it just oh it's so much <laughs> so if anything new gets added to my life that takes up that 10 percent space or more i just like have a breakdown and the stress from waiting for an answer and like this is the big answer this isn't like i sent off a partial or a query or even a full like this is an answer i'm gonna get that like this sounds dramatic but it could change the trajectory of my life like it's gonna start possibly my career or not and so um that's <laughs> not been great for my mental health so what i've been doing is just 
not thinking about it. In fact, sitting down to talk to you guys is the first time I've actually said these words. <laughs> that, you know, this is such a big thing that I'm trying not to think about because thinking about it, like, breaks me out. Um, you could look at this! I'm so rashed! Do you guys- <laughs> I'm such a mess. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. But I'm hoping by talking to you guys and like essentially talking to myself, like talking myself through this, um, I can kind of work through that like, it's okay, this is scary, but it's not that scary. But it's just a little too much with everything going on. And I feel like if I was a little bit more healthy, then, you know, I, I wouldn't be handling it so badly. But what I'm doing to cope uh, while waiting for this decision is that I am really not thinking about it as much as possible like it's always in the back of my mind but i'm like running from it like we're playing a game of tag <laughs> and i'm running and then the thoughts creep up and they get me and i ah! and then i keep running and then they keep following me and like that's how we've been i've not been doing a lot of writing um that was something that i wanted to do i think writing is a great distraction um but unfortunately every time i start writing it brings about the fact that i'm it's too close to like the anxiety trigger of thinking about the decision, right? Like it's just, it's too related. So every time I start writing, I just like <laughs> start getting heart attack symptoms. It's fine. Yeah, this is what waiting feels like. It's one of those weird things where you're not thinking about it, but you're always thinking about it. And every time you get an email, you kind of jump a little bit. I don't know. The world's still turning. Things are still happening. I, in fact, got two two full requests just since I sent off the R&R. So that's exciting to know that there's, you know, still hope that if the R&R comes back in a rejection, that there are other agents maybe that are interested in the project. So I'm trying to stay positive and I'm trying not to think about it. I'm trying to distract myself. And really, I'm just taking this off time um, to focus on like health because I'm, I'm not doing so good in that department. Um, but yeah, so that's what's happening. And I just wanted to let you know. <laughs> Pray for me. Okay, I'm trying to breathe. Um, <laughs> freaking out a little bit. So I was sitting over here trying to write and I just got an email and I looked and it's from the agent. She's getting back to me. I don't know how I want to do this. I don't know if I want to like show you my reaction <sighs> because I'm terrified that it's going to be like a no. <laughs> and then I'll have it on camera, which I'll be fine. But, uh, I don't feel good. I don't feel good. I think I'm just nervous. Feeling dread, feeling dread. To be continued.